Hello, I'm Terry George. I've been asked by the Norfolk Historic Buildings Group to give a talk on Norwich's undercrofts. Since I retired from teaching a few years ago, I've had more time to devote to my interest in local history. So today I'm going to talk about one of my favourite topics of local history, undercrofts. So I want to take you on a voyage of discovery of some of these hidden treasures that lie beneath our feet as we walk through our beautiful city of Norwich. Along the way, I'll tell you some other things I've found out and I'll also say something about how my interest came about and how it developed and I was spurred on to try and visit as many of these undercrofts as I could and take photographs. Most of you have no doubt been to either Strangers Hall or Bridewell or at least seen photographs in books and online but many of the undercrofts that I'm using today to illustrate my talk are rarely if ever open to the public. So. Sit back and enjoy this talk as we boldly go where few have been before. At least not in modern times. I've called my talk Norwich's Hidden Heritage because for the most part its medieval undercrofts are just that, hidden from view. In some instances in the most unexpected places. We're all familiar with Norwich's stunning visible heritage which is above the ground, such as the castle, the cathedral, Elm Hill. But an equally fascinating heritage lies mostly underneath the ground. Here, for example, is a 16th century building on Bedford Street, now a travel agent's, which is the remains of a 16th century shop front. It's highly visible and it's passed every day by hundreds of people as they walk along Bedford Street. But below this building there lies an example of our hidden heritage, a 15th century undercroft. When I visited several years ago it was not in use and most of the staff working the travel agents had never seen it. Access was through a small hatch in the floor at the back of the shop. There was no lighting in the undercroft at the time so I had to rely on my uh, trusty torch. I've used the word undercroft several times already so perhaps before we go any further I ought to explain what an undercroft is. Here are some definitions I've found. A vault or a chamber under the ground, especially in a church, a cellar or storage room often brick lined and vaulted. My preferred definition comes from Pevsna. Undercroft is a vaulted room beneath the main room of a medieval house. In most instances the undercroft is wholly or partly beneath the ground. This example on King Street is the Music House, 15th century undercroft. Underneath an ecclesiastical building it's called a crypt. The same method of construction was employed but it was obviously used for a different purpose. For example at St Andrew's Hall the crypt was used as accommodation for the friars. Having sorted that out, now is perhaps a good time to say how my love of undercrofts came about. Rather whimsically, I've subtitled this part of the talk, How Did I Get Into Undercrofts? I'm sure many of you are wondering how my interest developed in this fascinating hidden heritage of ours. Over the years, I'd visited the undercrofts at Strangers Hall and, and Dragon Hall, but only had a vague awareness of what they were about. It was during Heritage Open Days a few years ago that my interest in undercrofts really developed when I got the opportunity to visit several undercrofts which are not usually open to the public. I went to chance, chance to see um, the Assembly House, the Guildhall and Zellies on St Giles Street. I remember almost tingling with excitement at seeing such treasures which I was, until then, almost totally unaware of. I was hooked and I had to find out more. So where to begin? I had a small collection of books on Norwich's history which I decided to look through to see if I could find any entries on undercrofts. 
I've already mentioned Pevsner. It's also had Brian Ayres, Norwich, Archaeology of a Fine City. There's a very interesting section on Undercrofts. And Brian comes up with a figure of 60. Also looked through Michael Loveday's Norwich Knowledge. And My Michael mentions 69 surviving Undercrofts. I knew where some of them were, but not 69, so I needed to find out more. So let's recap on what I knew already. I knew there were at least 69 surviving undercrofts. I knew a small number of them were open to the public now and again, or regularly. But there were lots of others I knew nothing at all about. I searched unsuccessfully for a published list of Norwich's undercrofts. Couldn't find any anywhere online or in books. So, the obvious thing was, I needed to make my own. I already knew that many of English Heritage's list of buildings records included entries on undercrofts. So that seemed a good place to start. It was a slow job sifting through the entries to find undercrofts to add to my list, but after several months I had eventually a list which was not quite 69 but approaching that figure. Also quite by chance I came across Norfolk Heritage Explorer, a very interesting website which also had entries on undercrofts, so that added a few more to my list. Sometime later I became aware of Norwich Hearts report on undercrofts, which was the result of a survey undertaken in 2006. It's very interesting reading and I found out quite a bit and I was able to add a few more to my list, bringing the figure to around about 80. I also discovered that 69 referred to by Michael Loveday in his book were just the ones that were visited by Smith and Wright as part of their survey and there were others which were not visited and in fact there were others not even mentioned in the report which surprised me. Initially all I was doing was collecting a list of undercrofts. I hadn't got any particular plans to visit them but one day my wife saw an advert for a tour of the undercroft at the Bridewell I signed up for it and that's the beginning. I was hooked. That was the catalyst that set me off on my uh, attempts to visit as many as possible. So the next one was WH Smith on the Walk which as many of you probably are aware is open to the public. All you need to do on a weekday is ask to visit the Undercroft and they have to permit you to visit it. All thanks to Michael Loveday when he was planning officer But what about all the other undercrofts, the ones that are not open to the public, the ones that are never open on Heritage Open Days? How was I going to get in there? I had my list, so it's up to me to find ways to get in there. It was with some trepidation I went into offices and shops asking if I could see the undercroft. I think my first successful visit was on uh, Redwell Street and after that I grew more confident and more able to go into shops and offices and, and just ask. So I also put notes through letterboxes, knocked on doors, sent emails, made phone calls. Most have been only too willing to help me. A few have refused or ignored my requests, but on the whole I've been quite satisfied with my um, visits. Over several years I managed to visit more than 60 of Norwich's undercrofts and taken photographs of all of them. There still remain some I have not visited but there's still time. The rest of my talk is devoted to presenting things that I found out about undercrofts in Norwich from various sources and from my own observations. Let me stress at this point that I'm neither a trained historian nor a trained archaeologist. Just a person, a lay person who's interested in undercrofts, has a passionate interest in them and wants to share what he's found out about them. At the end of this talk I've listed the sources I've used if you wish to find out even more.
All those cities like um, Southampton and Winchelsea have got large collections of surviving undercrofts. Norwich has the largest collection of any city in the country. At least 80 of them survive, and the sites of many others are known. So what were they built of? Most undercrofts in England were built of stone, but Norwich is the big exception, with nearly all of them built of brick. This is because there was a shortage of suitable stone in the county, and the use of stone from places like Carn in northern France was reserved for high status buildings. The early 12th century undercroft at the Music House were built of stone, while the earliest example of brick was the Bridewell, which was built in around about 1370. There were basically two types of undercroft construction, those with diagonal and lateral ribs, and those with tunnel-like barrel vaults. These two examples are from the Bishop's Palace. Rib vaulted undercrofts were usually based on rectangular bays with diagonal ribs and a lateral rib between bays. Most of them have quadripartite ribs, though there are examples of sexpartite and octopartite ribs in the bridle, for example. Quadripartite means that the vaulting was divided into four sections by two diagonal ribs. These are examples from Blue Marchese, the Bridewell and Redwell Street. In this photo, you can see clearly in Redwell Street the four intersecting ribs. Barrel vaults are semicircular vaults and are found with or without lateral ribs. Two examples here one on Prince Street has pointed barrel vault, while the one on Bishopsgate has a straightforward circular barrel vault. Many have side chambers, as in this example on King Street, and or uh, end chambers, as this example in the Dragon Hall. It's a feature which is believed to be unique to Norwich, and it's allowed for an increase in floor space without any increase in the height and span of the principal vault. Most undercrofts are wholly or partly under the ground. There was little or natural light in them. So lamp niches were usually provided, located in the walls. They were made of brick and frequently positioned opposite the entrance to the undercroft. In these two examples, the one on the right looks is more elaborate. And that's at Bedford's, and I'll tell you more about that later. Most undercrofts are quite basic and not particularly ornamented. This example on Bedford Street is a rib-vaulted two-bay undercroft with four side chambers. Well, the one above is a barrel vaulted side chamber on Bethel Street. Although most of Norwich's undercrofts appear to have been used for storage, several of them are more elaborate and probably used for something more than storage. The Bridewell, for example, and the, the later chambers have octopartite vaulting, which suggests that uh, the merchant was trying to show off his wealth and was probably using it for display Bedford's also looks more elaborate, with a central pillar which is octagonal and which enabled higher springing of vaulting and all the floor space could therefore be used. The most undercrofts were fairly small, there's quite a considerable difference between the smallest and the largest. The smallest, at 10.7 square metres, including side chambers, as shown on this photograph, appears on London Street and was built in the late 16th century. The largest is the late 15th century one at the Music House, which is 97 square metres. It consists of three bays of quadripartite vaulting. The suite of undercrofts at the Bridewell covers over 300 square metres and is the largest in Norwich.
and there's an extensive suite of interconnected barrel vaulted undercrofts underneath number 28 to 30 Elm Hill, which I'll say more later. For the most part, we do not know who built these undercrofts. Most of the original buildings above these undercrofts have been lost. What we do know is that domestic examples were built by merchants. We know, for example, that Robert Topps extended the undercroft at Dragon Hall, and the Strangers Hall undercroft was probably built for a merchant named Ralph de Middleton. Undercrofts were commonly built in England and Scotland throughout the 13th, 14th and 15th centuries. Most of the ones in Norwich date from the 15th century. Earlier ones include the 12th century music house and the later ones the 16th century undercroft at 55 London Street. For the most part the practice of building undercroft seems to have gone out of fashion in Norwich after the fires of 1507 which destroyed 40% of the housing stock in Norwich. In many cases though the undercroft survived being built of brick and been fireproof and were reused. According to Chris King, landlords were reluctant to include undercrofts in their new properties. They did not see it as a good investment. And additionally, undercrofts were not suitable for the long-term storage of cloth, which needed to be stored above ground. Already said. Most of Norwich's undercrofts date from the 15th century, though it's difficult to date them with any accuracy. Only a handful of the building that was contemporary with the undercroft surviving. The run the door nature makes it difficult to date them. The structure can only provide the most general rule of thumb for comparative dates, according to um, Robert Smith. And there seems to be no correlation between the type of construction used and the date of the undercroft rib vaulted or barrel vaulted. Often undercrofts are dated by comparing them with other undercrofts nearby which uh, have been dated. What were they used for? Well, they were built to provide level fireproof foundations for timber framed houses and were used for storage which is important for merchants who tended to own the buildings. They tend to be accessed from inside the building above, usually by a stair of brick or entered by external doors, normally from the side or at the rear of the property. This of course would have restricted the size of goods that could be stored to what one man could carry. Larger undercrofts, such as the Bridewell, may well have been used for display. There seems to be no evidence of any of the undercrofts in Norwich being used as shops as they were in places like Chester and Winchelsea for which they would need access from the street. The use of undercrops is likely to have varied between different households, dependent upon the nature of their economic activities. Some could have been used for the storage of merchandise, but the restricted access and narrow entrance doors would of course limit this function. Robert Smith in his Thesis of 1990 suggests that the majority were probably used for the storage of domestic food and fuel. Here is an example of a winder staircase at 3 Queen Street and there were only two to survive in Norwich. Now let's have a look where all these undercrofts are within the city. Most of Norwich's undercrofts can be found on the south side of the Wensum, as you can see in this map, taking advantage of hillside sites as the ground rises steeply. There are only a small number on north of the river, only four that I'm aware of.
As I've already said, there are somewhere in the region of 80 surviving undercrofts in Norwich, and a large proportion of these are to be found on just a few streets. So in the following slides, I've illustrated each of these streets with the undercrofts that I've seen. On King Street, there are at least six undercrofts. There are two at the Music House, one dating from the 12th century, and the other one dating from the 15th century. And Dragon Hall dates from the 14th century. And number 60 under what was once the Three Tons pub and was for many years the offices of the Norwich Preservation Trust. And number 91 on the other side of the road is a private house. And there are five on Bedford Street and Pottergate. One underneath the granary at number 5 Bedford Street, one underneath the travel agents at 15 Bedford Street, which we've already mentioned. The one at Bedford is perhaps, in my opinion, the finest undercroft in Norwich. Number 21, which used to be Hovels, there's two side chambers remaining of an undercroft, one of which extends underneath Wider Lally. Number 65 is the only surviving undercroft on Pottergate, which is on the risk register. There are at least nine surviving undercrofts on Tombland and Wensum Street, three bay undercroft beneath the language school at number four, number 12 now a shoe shop, there are two side, surviving side chambers, Number 14, which is Augustine Stewart House, the undercroft is used now by uh, Thrifty Escape. There's a two bay undercroft underneath the Louis Marchese pub at number 17. Number 22, there's a remaining side chamber, and at number 26, there's a remaining chain side chamber which extends underneath the road at the side of the building. There are seven on St Giles Street, the most impressive probably being the one underneath the dual zellies. At St Giles House there's the remains of a two and a half bay undercroft. The undercrofts under the former YMCA on St Giles Street. There are four surviving undercrofts on Princess Street, three of them close together on the side of the street facing St Andrew's Hall, while the other one, number 20, Trattoria Rustico, is further down and it actually consists of two undercrofts, the 15th century one, which you can see in the photograph, and some more recent 16th century one at the front of the building. Four survive on Elm Hill. The one at number 20 consists of two side chambers which extend underneath Dutton's Court. One at number 34 36 is a side chamber which um, is probably part of a much larger undercroft. But the most impressive on Elm Hill is one underneath 28 to 30, which is a suite of barrel vaulted undercrofts extending quite a long way. There are at least four on Gentleman's Walk from Haymarket. The one under the fat face is a must see at Heritage Open Days. The one at WH Smith consists of three bays of um, rib vaulting and there's evidence of a fourth bay which um, is lost. There are three on Queen Street, one at number one consists of two side chambers, and at number, th number three there is a barrel vaulted undercroft with two side chambers and a winder staircase which I mentioned previously. Well there are only two examples in Norwich.
There were at least six on Cathedral Close, three of which were part of a former bishop's palace. The oldest of these being the one on the top left, which is a barrel vault dating from the 12th century. The undercroft on the top left is occasionally open to the public for art exhibitions. Over the years I've made many requests to visit different undercrofts in Norwich. Most of my requests have been successful and I've been granted access and been able to take photos. Not all, some for various reasons I was unable to access. But in 2019 there were four that I'd previously tried unsuccessfully to visit which I was allowed to visit. For various reasons, circumstances had changed, occupants of the building had changed, perhaps I did try a different approach, or I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Number 12 Timland was for many years a jeweller's. Then, for some considerable time, it was unoccupied, and it was just by chance that I discovered that a shoe shop had opened up in number 12, so I contacted the, the owner, and she was only too pleased to let me come and visit. She's probably almost as excited as I was. As you can see, the undercroft consists of two barrel vaulted side chambers. I'd long wanted to visit this um, extensive series of connected barrel vaulted undercrofts underneath 28 to 30 Elm Hill. The restoration of the building had recently been taken on by the Norwich Preservation Trust. I contacted Chloe at MPT and expressed my interest. I was amazed how quickly she got back to me. Of course I could visit the undercroft, but I would need some special equipment. I'd need a safety hut safety boots and a torch. I didn't hesitate, I bought what I needed and arranged to visit that week. I could understand the need for the safety equipment with the low ceilings, rubble on the floor and dark corners. It's well worth a visit if you ever get the opportunity. Access was through a hatch in the back of the house down a rickety stair The original entrance to the undercroft is outside in the yard and now blocked up as can be seen in the photograph. Many of you probably remember this undercroft from the time it was used by Charles for the Print Museum. It's on Whitefriars and is currently owned by Mills and Reeve. I contacted them and was pleasantly surprised when I was told I could visit that same week. So I took the opportunity and um, it was a very interesting tour. I was told that um, there is haunting and ghosts have been seen, but fortunately for me, the day I went was not the day the ghost appeared. But um, seriously, it's very interesting down to Croft. It uh, was formerly part of the uh, Carmelite Priory. I previously looked for this undercroft several years ago when visiting undercrofts connected with Norwich School but had been able to find it. So a chance encounter on social media gave me the opportunity to actually to visit it this time. It's a former cellarer's undercroft from the monastery and there are three barrel vaulted side chambers. Unfortunately there's no wine or beer left from the cellarer's um, original stock. The basis of my talk was originally written before the uh, Covid outbreak last year, so some of the information to do with the visiting might be um, changing now that um, the lockdown is over. So which ones can you visit and when? Only a small number are actually open to the public. This is um, the situation before Covid, so uh, it might be changing. Uh, in the future. 
Somewhere up in regular in Strangers Hall and Jonas Bar. Or the kind of cafe, or I think it's called Shoebox now, is open for bookable tours. As is the Bridewell. Some are open occasionally on Heritage Open Days, such as Fat Face, Zellies, the Assembly House and the Guildhall. I think you have to book for them. While there are others which are open for events or private bookings, such as Bedford's, Louis Marchese, Trattoria Rustica, the Cryptic Escape Rooms and Augustin Stewart House. The Carnery Chapel has exhibitions on occasionally, shown to the public. And the Village Smith, as I've mentioned before, is open on request. As I said, some of these may well um, change. What are they used for now? Well, some are used for restaurants such as um, the one at Cinema City, um, Suckling House, and the uh, Undercroft beneath the uh, Grona Fish Bar. Some are used for, um, well, as you can see, which is machine rooms. The one in the top round the corner, St Andrew's Brew House, is used for, for storing the barrels and the one on the bottom right is used as a clothes store. And Friday nights is music night at Jonas Bar. Hopefully it will be restored as soon as possible. Some are not in very good condition and the best are used for storing junk. As you can see the one that 65 Potticate has got um, scaffolding in to support the uh, the vault in. So when I visited, it was very difficult to, to photograph and um, get in because of the scaffolding. I haven't mentioned tunnels because my talk is about undercrofts rather than tunnels. But I'm um, sure some of you are interested to know whether there are any tunnels in these undercrofts. Well, if you look at the photograph of W. H. Smith, there's a Iron Gate blocking off a what seems to be a passage leading to somewhere. I was told it was a tunnel blocked off tunnel, but um, I just couldn't actually see it without getting through down through the gate. At 14 Tombland, there are arches which look as if there could be tunnels, but they're, they're just wall arches. And the kind of cafe, which for a long time when it was ponds, was rumoured to have tunnels leading to the castle and to um, Cathedral. Well, this is the undercroft which, according to Brian Ayres, is just a 15th century undercroft. No evidence of tunnels. So there may well be tunnels in Norwich. I don't know, but lots of the tunnels which are rumoured to exist are probably just misconceptions and are not tunnels at all. So I'll just leave it there. To finish off with a selection of undercrofts not open to the public and say a little bit more about them. The building above the undercroft was built in the 19th century and has always been a public house. It's currently St Andrew's Brew House. The undercroft is built of brick with flint walls up to springing level. There are four bays of quadripartite vaulting with a notable difference in size between the two eastern bays and the western bays. Modern rendering and paint cover two eastern bays and the north half of the adjoining bay to the west, while the south part of the west bay is um, the brickwork is exposed. Obviously it's not known what the Randacroft was originally used for. This is one of two surviving side chambers underneath 52 Colgate. It's one of the few examples of Undercrofts north of the river. This one is underneath um, 9 to 11 
London Street, which is part of Charles now, one of two surviving side chambers of a 15th century undercroft. And I think they extend underneath the pavement of London Street. There appears to be the remains of a lamp niche in the back of the um, vault. The graffiti looks modern. Six Ninham's Court is a 16th century house which was at one time the home of Nugent Monk, the founder of the Madden Market Theatre. The undercroft dates from the 15th century. It's built of brick with lime plaster in many places. It consists of three bays in a complex L-shaped plan. There's a guard robe shaft in the west wall and several lighting niches. And it's positioned away from the street line. Access is from within the house. The building has long been empty and is now in the hands of the Norwich Preservation Trust who will be restoring it at some point in the future. Two Redwell Street is a 19th century office building with a 15th century brick undercroft underneath. It consists of two bays of quadripartite vaulting, as you can see in the picture. There's a long barrel vaulted end chamber which extends beneath the Redwell Street pavement. All undercroft is at the right angles to the street line. Twenty six Tombland, Cambridge House, is an eighteenth century building which is currently a solicitor's office. The undercroft beneath it is believed to date from the fifteenth century and is constructed of a combination of brick and stone. It is situated beneath the carriage entry at the east end of the building. It consists of a pointed barrel vaulted chamber which is probably a side chamber, which probably formed part of a, a more extensive undercroft. Before I finish, perhaps I shouldn't really overlook the fact that there are several undercrofts in other parts of Norfolk besides Norwich. There's the Guild Hall at Blakeney, which is built of brick and stone on stone foundations and dates from the late 14th or early 15th century. At Worcester, there's a St Andrew's Cottage, built of brick in about 1400. Aylsham's got Allman House, built of brick in the 14th century. In Great Yarmouth, there's one on Howard Street, which is 12th and 15th century. And the one which I discovered recently, it's an Olive's Priory. As I said, it's only very recently that I became aware of the existence of this undercroft. It's an English heritage site and the, the ruins have been open for some time, but it's only very recently that the undercroft has been reopened to the public. I took the opportunity to go and visit recently my first undercroft for several, well, for a long time, since the beginning, beginning of the pandemic. It's a 14th century undercroft built of brick in reasonably good condition. It's beneath the uh, former Cannons Refectory which was destroyed during the Reformation. It's a very interesting undercroft and it's worth a visit if you're in the area. That concludes my talk on Norwich's undercrofts. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to find out more, there's a list of some of the sources I've used uh, in my research.